Hello again, a few words about myself as the presenter. As you may know, I was in the wave one group trained directly by Thomas Hanna. And uh, subsequent to that, I spent two years on staff at a hospital wellness and rehabilitation center in California. And I've created, uh, when was it, 16 to 18, I lost count, programs, published somatic education instruction programs, the most recent of which is probably the most interesting, that being a program I call Comforting Your SI Joints, which came out of my own dire need. I had a nasty case of twisted sacrum with symptoms that included the following shooting pains in my pelvis like lightning bolts, burning and numbness in my right thigh side in front, deep pain in the left hip joint, right gluteal pain, which was not from the gluteals. It was referred nerve pain and uh, sciatica symptoms down the right leg behind the knee to the calf, which did not respond to the otherwise surefire approach for clearing up sciatica. It was, again, a, a, a consequence of the twisted sacrum. And I had that condition actually in a lower grade form since I was a teen, where uh, I had the impulse frequently to twist my hips forcibly in order to get myself to pop at the waistline level. And I do a, a neck crack routine because I was commonly uncomfortable in those places. And those are two regions that are commonly affected by a twisted sacrum. The twist at the sacrum sets up a helical spiral of contraction all the way up the spine, can go into the jaws and even affect the eyes, eye movements, because those are tied directly into the neck. And in, oh gosh, I think it was 2006, I had a real nasty seizing up in which I looked like I was in massive Landau reaction, but it was not that. It didn't respond to the Landau reaction lesson. It um, did subside somewhat after long periods of relentless somatic explorations in myself. But then I had another major seizing up in 2006, 2008, and then. Let's see, 2013, and it was the severity of those episodes that got me to investigating relentlessly what was going, going on in me, and due to circumstances that need not be gone into right now, I, I discovered I had a twisted sacrum, and I began exploring for what it would take to straighten that. And I used somatic education exercises as the approach, got myself out of the nastiness of the pain. I didn't even tell you all the symptoms. Oh, yeah, tight wire feeling going down my spine into the pelvis and a strong seizing up gripping sensation at my lower abdomen with burning at the groin and in the bladder region. There are more symptoms, but, you know, I think that's enough. Anyway, the point was that this program came out of clearing up my own condition. And since that time, I published it as a paid program, and everybody who has used it has gotten good results from it. So let's see what else here. Injuries. I, I had a fall from a second-story balcony, landed on concrete on my feet. That changed my walking pattern for about six weeks because I couldn't stand to walk on my heels. Um, being hit by a car on my bicycle. And let's see what else here. Oh, yeah, my judo training, which involved repeatedly falling off of a table onto a mat below. This was teaching us how to fall without getting hurt. However, I developed those sacral symptoms after all of those things. It was pretty nasty. So let's see what else I can say about this here. Oh, yeah. Um, well, let's see, when I came into training with Tom Hanna, I was the one person that had not been a client of his, but I had been practicing somatic education exercises developed through the Rolf Institute, Judith Ashton and Ida Rolf. I practiced those for some 20 years, and 
I learned a great deal about somatic education from working on those exercises. I use them to clear my mind and to straighten my posture. The exercises were developed to support the effects of rolfing, and I was getting rolfing during that time. So 20 years of that. Now, it's come to my attention, as I've said before, that some people are getting their knowledge of somatic education by rote rather than by understanding and by being able to apply the basic principles in innovative ways. And had I not been able to do that kind of improvisation, I would not have been able to get myself out of trouble with a twisted sacrum. So in my view, it's essential to be able to work from principles and not merely from protocols. Let's see if there's anything else of importance that comes to mind. Yeah, just this. Um, the work as conveyed to us first waivers by Tom Hanna has been modified in the, the uh, trainings given subsequently, so the protocols are not done the same. It's been my view that the orthodox teaching, that is what he gave us, should be adhered to as closely as possible until you have mastered it and exceeded it, at which point you can improvise and you may make certain alterations, not based on mere opinion or happenstance, but by, on a, uh, by a clear intention. That is to say, knowing exactly what you're doing, knowing what you want to do and doing it. When I deliver trainings, I deliver toward a person's understanding and their embodiment of the work. Oh yeah, that brings us to another thing Tom Hanna said. He said he expected us each personally to exemplify the work. That is to walk the talk and not merely talk the talk. And again, I foster that in the trainings I deliver with people because I feel it is essential for us to be able to teach, to embody the work. So I think I'm going to leave it at that here and then uh, there'll be a, another video to follow. By the way, if you have a question, you may communicate it to me and I will respond.